So Edvin, what is it about self-managing teams that interests you personally? It started a couple of years back, uh, back in my internship. Let's say that that's around eight to nine years back. I, I did an internship and a research on, uh, on, uh, on new ways of work. Uh, back then it was called Enterprise 2.0, Enterprise Social Network. So how social tools like uh, Facebook was coming up, uh, like Facebook could help the, the, the informal networks within an hierarchical uh, organization. So my interest was, uh, I was pretty intrigued back then. Um, but didn't do that much with it. I started uh, some consultancy roles, but always was I was always looking at how can I empower the teams to be more autonomous. And I uh, joined the management team here at the Rotterdam office of Incentro four years ago, and then I saw the the informal networks within Incentro and also how the employees are empowered within Incentro and uh, the big difference it, it was for uh, our employees and uh, other companies uh, in, our, in our market. So what I was trying to do together with a couple of uh, management team members back then was uh, to find new ways of work, uh, how we can get even more empowerment within the uh, uh, within our office and how we can be more transparent and in order to reach more happiness for our employees and yeah the most uh, fascinating thing for me about self management is 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 this uh, empowerment thing how can i uh, get and give more energy towards my colleagues and other uh, other people uh, to get more out of themselves and to reach their their goals. So Incentro was interested in investigating like new ways of working and, and that's where you kind of came in to start introducing self-management and things like that. So it kind of was born out of a interest in finding new ways of working or was there a business driver as well? Uh, the mission of Incentro is digital happiness. Yeah? So we believe that uh, if our employees are happy, the rest will follow. So they, they, they will achieve excellent results and the clients will be happy as well. But it all starts with happy employees. And it's digital because we are an IT consultancy company, but the, the most important part is the happiness. So um, every office is completely autonomous within Incentro and every office uh, has its own strategy on how to reach the, happy, the highest happiness level possible for their employees. And uh, within the Rotterdam office, uh, we uh, did some research on, on the challenges we had and, and on, the, on the new ways of working. And then we came up with, of course, the book Reinventing Organization. And uh, um, yeah, once we read that, once we, uh, we read some uh, inspiring articles about uh, Zappos as well, and Buurzorg, we defined a vision and a strategy how to implement self-management within uh, the Rotterdam office. And that was about three three years ago, three to four years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so then it really starts. So what were your starting points or what have been the milestones along your journey towards becoming a self-managed organization? Yeah, um, let's start at um, Incentro wasn't an ordinary company at first. So uh, the um, the basis at Incentro is already that we are a great place to work. Uh, happiness is, is our mission. Um, and still, um, we had some challenges with finding new employees, uh, retaining uh, the, the employees, uh, and keeping them uh, challenged as well. So uh, when we started, we had a vision, and we, we tried to uh, a little bit in a little bit old-fashioned way as a management team we had a vision and we had a, a plan how to implement it within the organization and of course all the employees employees said um, they they didn't want it the way we we uh, proposed so uh, we, yeah, that, that was one of the the biggest learning points is that we, that we tried to create the self-managed teams 
uh, ourselves, and then uh, they could cho uh, choose in what team they uh, they want to join. But um, yeah, and and we try to motivate them and try uh, if if they don't if they didn't choose didn't choose uh, we help them uh, choose a, a, a team. But that uh, yeah that wasn't uh, very helpful because they want to choose their team themselves and uh, uh, find their own purpose. So, but so that was a, a, a pretty disappointing to start for us. Uh, but but the vision uh, about how can we uh, get our employees more empowered and how can we get them even more involved in the process and um, yeah happy be uh, getting more happy uh, as as a result for, of that. Um, so it was we 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 called it a kind of a opt-in uh, process. So um, there was one team that was very interested in uh, starting uh, as a self-managed team. Yeah, and we did a lot of coaching, a lot of uh, um, uh, helping that team in uh, what it takes to be a, a, a working team and a working, uh, yeah, almost a working company within a company, but then in a smaller level. Um, so... Uh, when they when they uh, hit saw a couple of successes as a as a self managed team, they were ambassadors. So they had they are were completely autonomous. They were completely free to decide how they spend their uh, their money, uh, how, which client they want to uh, acquire, which partnerships they they started, uh, and other employees of the Euro Rail office uh, were intrigued by that as well and wanted to start their own uh, team. And in a while, uh, there were uh, uh, five teams. Um, and at, let's say that was over a year and a half ago. There were five self-managed teams, but there wasn't any uh, decision-making process over a fully complete office. So, and we, had sti we still had some employees that weren't in any team, so they are... Uh, part of the office, but not part of a team. Um, so we decided to start with uh, 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 two other things. Uh, one is called uh, uh, cell dealing. In, in English, it's something like cell division, but it's a meeting where every every cell is uh, uh, sent out one representative. So in that meeting, we discuss all. Uh, topics that concerns uh, all the teams or the of, uh, the office because uh, back then we didn't have any uh, well we did have we did still have a very small management team but by starting to create a um, a meeting for all the the, the sales and uh, the management team uh, we took all the decision decisions into the uh, the hands of the employees so that was a, a very important milestone. And uh, we stopped with uh, management team meetings and things behind closed doors uh, and trying to be as transparent as possible. So also transparent in all the uh, all the shared folders and, and stuff, all the information that was needed to uh, to run a successful uh, self managed team. You need you need uh, all the information uh, for that as well. So. Uh, we created uh, dashboards for the financials. We created uh, uh, so we created trainings uh, so that we can share our experience on uh, certain topics, like how how do you do your sales, how does marketing work, uh, recruitment, finance, all those uh, topics. And we did trainings uh, for uh, for everyone who wants to uh, uh, to join. And um, so uh, by creating those teams, by creating a, a process on making decisions with the old office, yeah, we started beginning to look like a, a little bit like a self-managed organization, um, but still very immature. So uh, it was very hard to, to make those decisions. The, the process was very long because Everyone had, has his uh, opinion, <laughs> um, but uh, 
when doing it, it uh, uh, let's say for uh, for a couple of months, everyone gets familiar with the process. Everyone uh, knows what their role is all about, and uh, we stopped uh, as a uh, as a management team as well. That was, I think, let's say three to four months later, we stopped as a management team. So uh, there there wasn't any manager anymore you could hide behind. And the management team uh, that was left, it was already a, a lot smaller than uh, traditional offices, um, we were reformed as a support team. So my role was managing director, and now I am coach uh, within the support team, and I'm helping all those teams, um, trying to be as much helpful as possible with my experience and uh, the, the knowledge that I have. Um, yeah, so no management team anymore, uh, five self-managed teams. We had a process on decision making and there was, uh, we introduced a thing called task forces. So that was, uh, uh, that, that, that are teams across uh, all other teams based on uh, specific topics. For example, uh, sales and marketing, and also uh, one for finance. So within every office, there is a there is one role that is responsible for, let's say, finance. Then we create a task force for all finance roles within the teams, and we discuss. We only discuss the finance topics and uh, decide on those topics. Um, and that helped a lot with collaborating. Uh, between this, the teams uh, on specific topics and uh, helping each other with the experiences they had on different topics within uh, their teams. What are some of the practices that you've developed? For example, you talk about decision making. What process do you use for decision making in Incentro? Uh, we are, um, for the last three months, we used uh, consent for, for decision making, and that was really helpful. Because um, we started with uh, with uh, a minor step back that was deciding uh, which role you had in the meeting and uh, from which role you are deciding. Because in meetings, uh, our colleagues tend to ha uh, decide based on their own opinion and not based on their responsibility they have at, uh, from the role they are attending the meeting. Were you sort of inspired somewhat by holacracy and then consent is more sociocracy? Yeah. It seems like you've created your own version. Is that the case? Yeah, that, that, that's really the case because, uh, uh, yeah, of course, we looked at, uh, at uh, uh, holacracy, but the thing uh, with holacracy is that it's really strict and you really have to follow it uh, by the letter almost. Uh, and then you can use the software they provided as well. but. Um, we don't really don't like the the the, uh, the processes and documenting all things possible, but we really like the, the clarity about the roles and the the, the, the pro, uh, some things of the process. So we borrowed the the, the roles concept of uh, of, holo of holacracy indeed, and we borrowed the the decision making process of sociocracy, and, and that is not uh, not. Uh, at its final stage yet, so we still have to decide if this, this is uh, how we want to work. But I think the most important change over the years is not that we are not that we are a self-managed organization. I think it's more that we are uh, a learning organization. Um, there's a theory called a deliberate uh, developing organization, and I think we are more leaning towards that uh, uh, that philosophy, yeah, so that we. Every challenge we uh, we uh, face, we try to do it uh, our best way possible. And if if we fail, we learn from uh, from that uh, challenge. And next time we will uh, do it uh, differently. Has it been difficult or challenging for any of the management team to um, shift from being kind of managers to? Um, more on an equal with other team members has it been tricky for them to let go at all uh, yeah of course even for me <laughs> and I, I 
I think, uh, yeah, it's because we worked uh, the traditional way, and it's still not that traditional because uh, uh, we only we are we were working based on the principles of Eckhart Vincent. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. No. So his his philosophy was that uh, every office is completely autonomous. So that's what we had already. And if it grows bigger than 60 employees, you split it up into two offices. So that's why Incentro already has uh, nine offices for only 300 uh, employees. Mm -hmm. And every office ha has a very small management team and we don't have any uh, staff uh, functions like uh, HR, recruitment, finance. We all did that within the offices. So it wasn't that traditional, but, but still, the management team uh, was was the uh, the team that decided uh, the strategy, the innovations, who to hire, and all things uh, that were concerning the yeah the profit and loss of the of the company. Um, yeah, and we also we always did it because we we thought we would help uh, the uh, employee by deciding. But when you change to a self managed organization and you decide everything for the uh, for your employees, yeah, that's that's not helping them. That's uh, uh, getting them in their in their way, hmm. getting in their way for. Uh, um, so yeah, once in a while I try to uh, to make a decision, and then I I uh, turn it back and uh, and ask their the employees. And, uh, and my colleagues in the office, what's, what's your opinion and what's, uh, what do you think we should do? So, um, yeah, uh, sometimes it's hard, um, but, but overall, um, yeah, we really like change because we could share our knowledge as a coach. So as a coach, what are some of the things that you've supported teams with? What are some of the struggles or challenges that they've had one of the nicest things there is uh, as being a coach is that you have the overall picture uh, on the office and the specific teams and the maturity of the of the teams and the the how they are uh, yeah how, how they are performing as a self-managed team so you can share the the practices uh, of one team that is very successful with the teams that are uh, less successful. Mm. So that, that is very interesting and I can, I can uh, share my experience on uh, how, to for, uh, how to be a team. So uh, it's not all about uh, the, the, the selling your product uh, to, uh, to the clients, it's also about being the best. Uh, uh, um, I wrote an article about the minimal viable team. So. Mm. Uh, being a team is more than only uh, a couple of people together. It's uh, it's about a shared vision, a shared purpose, and, but also uh, which personalities are involved in the team and what's the right balance between those personalities. And of course, uh, the team. If if you ask the team themselves, then they think they are completely balanced. But uh, looking from the coach perspective, you see a lot of uh, uh, gaps uh, between that. Um, so helping them, uh, uh, yeah, showing uh, showing a mirror, uh, uh, asking the right questions, and helping to create a shared vision and shared purpose for those teams. And would you say there are certain soft skills that are uh, useful or essential when working in self-managing teams? Yeah, the the, the soft skills. Communication is, is, is even more important when you are a team player uh, within a self-managed team. Then it's, uh, then it's important when you are just a consultant and uh, soft skills like communication and also uh, feedback. Uh, feedback uh, giving feedback to your uh, team members is very hard at first because you don't want to be that rude or that direct, even for Dutch. <laughs> It's, sometimes it's hard to be, uh, be uh, uh, they're almost friends with each other because they are a team and working close, closely to, to each other. But yeah, you still have to give feedback and you still have to decide uh, what amount of raise do you give your, uh, uh, your fellow team member. 
I'm curious about, um, because I read an article about the salary process that you developed at Incentro um, back in 2015, I think, when you yeah. made a decision to uh, make salaries open and for people to set their own pay rises. Could you yeah. share a bit about how that happened and and the things that you put into place to make sure that it ran smoothly, so to speak? Yeah, uh, uh, that, that's, a, that's a really nice article. And back in 2015, um, we decided we want we want uh, to decide the salary raise with the complete office. And back then, we we still had the management team and the managing director in every office. Um, but what we did was uh, what we did with self management transformation as well. Uh, so we uh, we tried to yeah give them as much relevant information as possible without overflowing them with all the information to try to train them in what is the impact of uh, this decision on the on the on office level and also on their uh, uh, on their own salary um, and by giving the information we had a lot of discussion and we tried to be there uh, uh, help them uh, to see the, the complete picture of the office and uh, what this what this decision is uh, is all about and um, yeah, after giving the information, every employee, uh, employee if, uh, within the office decided the, the amount of raise, uh, the, the average amount of raise for the complete office. And afterwards, we had a discussion, and we discussed the the the, the amount and also the the, the comments they added to, to it, so the the background information why they decided. Uh, that that percentage and based on that discussion discussion we decided as an office okay this this year we should reserve uh, this uh, amount of money for all the uh, uh, all the races and afterwards uh, 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 that, that, that was at the beginning of every year we did that for a couple of years and then the management team decided which employee gets what percentage uh, on individual level? Um, yeah, it worked. It worked okay uh, for the first couple of years. We learned a lot, but that doesn't work when you are in a self-managed uh, office. So within our Rotterdam office, we took it a couple of step, couple, couple of steps further. Sorry, um, and what we did last year, and I think that's very interesting, is what we did is. Uh, we did some, yeah, we, we did some sort of a retrospective of the last couple of years. Mm. Uh, how did we do it? What did we learn from it? What did we do well? And what uh, can we improve? Uh, we try to get inspired by articles online and by other offices. But by, uh, it was very, uh, uh, it was interesting that we, we tried to find other articles about uh, setting uh, salaries uh, within self-managed organizations. And when we asked it in a couple of communities, they pointed to the article that you were referring to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that was hard, uh, finding uh, really inspiring articles for that. So we decided uh, to create our own process. And what we did was um, every self-managed team. And so we had uh, the task force I, was mentioned, I mentioned before about uh, finance. And every self-managed team did a proposal on what average uh, salary raise they want as a team. And uh, together with a the forecast, they have about a couple of months, the next couple of months. And so uh, they, uh, so every team gives its proposal. And then, then as, a, as a finance task force, you see five uh, proposals in our office. And you see the... the, the um, you see the, the financial picture of the complete office, and if it's if it's possible, and uh, we use the consent for this as well. So if there is no uh, uh, obstruction or uh, or everyone approves, then uh, then it's fairly easy. Uh, then it's okay. But if there are obstructions or there is a lot of feedback about the proposal, then uh, yeah, the the team goes back with a lot of homework to create a new proposal. That, that suits the, the, the team. Hmm. So the, 
evolution of the salary process then, if I understand correctly, is that uh, now the finance task force is involved in shaping the proposal and you then use the consent decision making process? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, normally we uh, at first we did it as a complete office uh, with all the employees uh, for, for the complete office. And now um, every team is able to decide their own uh, salary raise. Uh -huh. And within the teams, every team has its own process on uh, dividing it into uh, uh, the, uh, fairly, fairly divided into the team members. And what are kind of current challenges, you know, areas that maybe you can see might need some evolution in the future? Yeah, that, that's, that's interesting because uh, what we are, the, the process we are doing the last year is every, every quarter we do a, a retrospective again on uh, what can we improve and what do we have to do to make it even better because uh, Self-management is not the goal, the happiness is the goal. So every time we uh, are looking if we are moving towards uh, happiness uh, of our employees, and if not, uh, then uh, we are uh, changing uh, things. So that's, that's also um, uh, for the next couple of months, um, we are looking uh, uh, for ways to collaborate on a deeper level on specific tasks like uh, recruitment and sales because the, we have the, those roles exclusively within the teams. But uh, if you are a consultant for, let's say, 32 to 40 hours, then it's very hard to, to be a recruiter as well uh, because it, it, it's also about uh, uh, relationship, uh, relationship management and also about uh, keeping in contact with the right uh, partners. Um, so together with all the, the recruitment responsibles within the teams, we are looking for ways to improve that thing uh, for, for the teams. And yeah, so that's, that's for recruitment and sales as well. But I think that are the main challenges for us uh, at the moment. Uh, and the, uh, a couple of challenges we had last uh, last quarter was, um, for example, uh, the clarity on what's the purpose of the task force, what's the, uh, what are the, the what is the scope and responsibilities. Mm. So uh, we learned uh, on uh, from Harlocracy again uh, for the definition of the of the different uh, initiatives within Rotterdam. Um, Clarity was one of the, the most important things. And also, we tried to simplify everything. Uh, I was inspired by, uh, uh, by Joost de Blok from mm. Buurtzorg. Uh, he uh, has uh, a philosophy of trying to make everything as simple as possible so that the self-managed teams are mainly focused on their purpose, helping uh, the world around them with the best healthcare possible. Um, so... As a support, uh, as a coach in a support team, I try to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Make everything as simple as possible and try to help all the, all the teams be, with being the best consultant possible. And when you say about measuring um, or measuring everything against employee happiness, that that's kind of the most important thing in Centro, do you, mm -hmm. have, a, do you have a way of measuring that? Yeah, we uh, <laughs> it was very. We started by uh, using a, a, a Google form with just one question uh, on a scale to from one to ten. How happy are you, and why isn't it higher? Uh, but over the years, we tried a couple of apps. Uh, but but uh, about a year ago, we created our own app called Moodforce, um, and. That app is measuring on specific uh, topics uh, uh, that we decided uh, we we want to know about about happiness and engagement um, to to help us uh, give more insights on the happiness level of our employees, but also on uh, what's the wellness and how can we 
uh, work on things like purpose uh, 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 and also on office happiness. So I understand that you're currently writing a playbook about self-management. What advice would you give to listeners who are hoping to create or develop self-managing teams of their own? Yeah, uh, yeah. The book is is a playbook. It's uh, yeah, some sort of a library of all the tools I created, uh, I co-created, uh, helping this office, and I'm already uh, sharing that with uh, other uh, offices and other companies as well. But it's, it's more of a, a collection of tools and practices you can use uh, to create your uh, uh, your self-managed team. But the, the one thing I, I would advise and the one thing I hear is that, uh, that that they want to implement self-management because they hear a lot of uh, a lot about it and they think oh, that's the new way we have to work without thinking about uh, what it is about what's their vision on the future of work what's their vision on uh, on what they want with the company and then uh, self-management can uh, how can self-management help reaching that goal uh, reaching your purpose um, so stop using self-management as a goal use it as a way you can reach your goal that would be my my first advice and then there's there are a lot of practices you can use from self-management and from all the different uh, uh, practices and uh, philosophies like uh, holacracy uh, sociocracy and also you can create your own but it's all about what do you want to achieve yeah that's good advice <laughs> i agree with you <laughs> so you you're leaving in centro in may what yeah. have you got in store for yourself what's what are your plans for the next phase of your career yeah um it's kind of hard to leave in Central. I, I worked here for seven here for seven years, did all different kind of stuff. Um, but I'm most enthusiastic about uh, the future of work, self-management, and empowering employees and, and my colleagues. Yeah, and I I want to create more impact on the world around me uh, with my uh, energy and with my belief on how to engage and empower. Uh, your workforce or your team around you to reach uh, new goals and uh, how to stay up to date with the uh, with the new challenges of the world. So yeah, I, I uh, um, what I did within Incentro, I want to help uh, other companies as well. Exciting. And what are your thoughts about the current landscape of work? Do you feel like? there is more energy and interest for new ways of working like self-management? Well, I say new ways of working. It's not that it's new, but it seems like there is more more of an interest in it now. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, there's a lot of interest. And um, you see the same uh, with uh, a couple of years back when for soft, software development teams working agile and scrum uh, ways um, within a center we started about uh, seven to eight years ago and uh, only two to three years ago it was very popular and everybody wanted to start using agile and uh, scrum practices i think uh, with with self-management or at least giving more autonomy uh, uh, to teams and uh, how to collaborate with the digital workforce, um, that are those visions are the, 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 those are not new practices, but somehow uh, in 2018 it's a time about uh, how, how to uh, change your organization into the future of work. And where are you getting your inspiration from currently? What organizations or thought leaders or authors are kind of your role models at the moment? Mm, I'm really inspired by uh, uh, Spiral. Mm. Of course, you know them. Um, the, the way they are organized as a network is, uh, is really inspiring for me. And uh, yeah, that, that 
is one of the biggest inspirations. But also the practices of uh, of Joost de Blok and Buurtzorg and uh, also uh, a little bit uh, uh, differently, but uh, Ricardo Sandler as well. But, but most of the inspiration inspiration and uh, uh, things I learned last last couple of years about cell management was was within uh, Incentro uh, and was from working with my colleagues, working closely with my colleagues on how to improve the way we w- we collaborate and how we work together to achieve our goals. And every challenge we face, I try to find inspiration in the world out there, uh, on seminars, uh, blog posts, uh, podcasts like yours, um, and so on. Yeah, I think there's a really good message there about people in organizations, by all means, you know, look to other organizations or examples in books or seminars. Um, but I think the key is is practice and experimentation and finding something that works for you. And as you yeah. say, starting with a goal in mind and finding the right tools in order to get to your goal, of which self-management is just one. But yeah. self-management shouldn't be the thing that you're aiming for in itself. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because uh, then, it's, then it's, it gets really hard. Why are you? Why are we self-managed? Why do you want your employees to be more engaged? Then, then the, the the whole process towards your goal, self-management, is is a lot harder. Because your employees don't know why we are changing. Yeah, exactly. Can you see in the future um, self-management becoming the norm in terms of organizations and how we work? Uh, that's a good question. I think the the term self management is not uh, the best chosen term, but it's uh, overall accepted as a term for uh, uh, giving more autonomy towards uh, teams and uh, and individuals. But um, yeah, there are a, a lot of global trends that are uh, shifting the way we collaborate and how we work together. Also, like the things uh, like the the gig economy and uh, the uh, machine learning trends, they are all impacting the way uh, we collaborate with each other. And I cannot say self management is the answer for those challenges, but what I can what I can say is that you have to create a an agile organization who can respond to every challenge they face and also the, the new digital uh, trends as well. I think that is uh, one of the answers, uh, being a, a huge organization with all hierarchy and all staff uh, offices. I think that is, that is definitely not the answer. And by creating autonomous teams and by creating yeah, individuals who can decide themselves and who are autonomous themselves and who can train themselves, I think that is the future.